when we don't know what we ought to do, we pray. The prayer room is open. Alrighty, well, before we get started, I'm going to pray for us. Thank you, Lord God, that you love us and that you are in control, that we can trust you. I thank you that you give us your peace, that you care about us, you know our names, and you are in control of the universe, of the world, of each country. I thank you, Lord, that we have the privilege of knowing you, and I pray that you will help us to get to know you more and to help other people to get to know you also. Well, the homework was to read 2 Timothy chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4, and to read Titus chapters 1, 2, and 3. So uh, I did that. I don't know if you did that, but I did that. And uh, the new homework is going to be to read Psalms chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now the Psalms, most of the Psalms are nice and short, all right? I know it's spring break, so I don't want to overload you with with homework, right? Okay, so, um, Psalms chapter 1 through 7 is the homework for uh, the next seven days. Now, if you do read all the homework, um, you know, fill out a sentence or two about each chapter, and uh, I'm not able to get the prizes to you right now, but I think we could probably you can probably stack it up, and then once we see each other again, then I can get the prizes to you. All right? All right. So, let's turn, if you brought your Bibles, to Psalm chapter 1. And I'm just going to read to you Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. I'll just stop right there. That's verse 1 and 2. Now, blessed. What does blessed mean? Well, when I pray for someone and I ask God to bless them, what I mean by that is that God would, would visit them with his presence, because to know God and be near to God really is the best thing in life. Um, people can think of being blessed as being uh, rich or being healthy or having good relationships with their friends and family or things going smoothly or easily for them in their life. Um, but when the Bible says here, blessed is the man who walks and then it describes the man who's blessed by God, it basically means that God is pleased with him and happy with him and he has God's favor and help and uh, yeah you can ask your parents for more on that definition of blessed so blessed is the man so this is the man that we should try and be the or the boy or the girl that we should try, we should try and be blessed we should try and have we should try and live in such a way that we're doing what God wants us to do because if you're not doing what God wants you to do, then you're doing what the devil wants you to do. And uh, that doesn't end well at all. So we should do what God wants us to do. And uh, it comes with benefits to follow God. But we shouldn't follow God just for the benefits. We should follow God because we love him and he loves us. Anyway, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked. That means uh, those bad kids at school or in your neighborhood, don't do what they do. I'm not saying you should ignore them and never talk to them, but you shouldn't do bad things with them. 
nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Now, uh, a scoffer here isn't talking about someone who eats their dinner really fast. It's about talking about someone who, who mocks, makes fun of other people and things all the time. So apparently, that's a bad thing to God. So it should be for us as well. However, the good person, the person who is blessed, he, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. So i just like to ask you, do you meditate or do you think about the Bible in the day or in the night? Do you think about what it says, what God says to you in the Bible? Um, do you think about it? A lot of people don't, but if you want to be a man, a person who is blessed by God, then one of the ways to do that is to think about God's Word. Because God's Word is more important than anyone's Word, more important than the President's Word, um, more important than your friend's Word, even more important than, than your parents' Word, but definitely more important than your Word and my Word. So God's Word is most important. So it would be beneficial for us to listen to God and to think about what God says. All right, so verse three. So this man that does these things, who's blessed by God, he is like a tree planted by streams of water. Have you ever seen a tree down by the river? Big old roots and stem and trunk and leaves. That's what someone is like who obeys God and who does these things. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. So just like a tree needs water to live and to thrive, people need God and God's word. Just like a tree needs sunlight to grow and to flourish, people need God to grow and to flourish. Not talking about growing physically, but to grow spiritually on the inside. We need God. So yeah, there's more on that later in the rest of the Bible too. Verse 4, there's only three more verses. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff. Now what's chaff? Well, to put it simply, it's, it's the part of the plant you don't eat on certain plants. Okay, that's a very, very basic definition. <laughs> but basically, um, they would be preparing the food that they would eat fr from these plants. And uh, the chaff was the part that they wanted the wind to blow away because they weren't going to use it. They weren't going to eat it. Speaking under correction, it's, uh, they grew wheat and it's the part of the, the wheat that you don't eat, that you don't use to make bread. Okay? Basically, it's useless. So God is saying that the wicked are like something useless that gets blown away. Now, you don't want to be something useless that gets blown away. You want to be something good and useful to God and to... So, God makes a distinction between the wicked and the righteous. And which side are you going to be on? You can decide. Do you want to follow God? Or do you want to follow, just do your own thing? Which is another way of following the devil. You want to follow God. Let me, I'll give you that tip. You want to follow God. Um, so God makes a distinction between the wicked and the blessed. Verse 5 says, Therefore the wicked, yes, they're like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment. It doesn't mean they won't come into judgment. It means like in the judgment they won't stand in the sense of the judgment won't go well for them. The judgment won't turn out well for them. They'll be judged and they'll be found guilty. They won't stand in judgment. Their case won't, you know, be approved or they won't be found innocent. They'll be found guilty. Just like all of us before God would be found guilty. Me too. Um, the only way that we can be found not guilty before God is if we ask him to forgive us. If we follow him. That's how. And then God gives us 
the innocence of Jesus Christ, the goodness and the righteousness of his Son. So, but the wicked, they reject God, so they're found guilty. And they're like the chaff that the wind drives away. So it says in verse 5, Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked will perish. And that's all of Psalm chapter 1. All right. So there are two ways. The broad way, the way of the wicked, and the narrow way, the way of the righteous. The broad way, the people following Satan, self, and sin. And the narrow way, the people following Jesus Christ. All right? One is, one is blessed, and the other is cursed. All right? And the Bible teaches that all of us start out in this life on the broad way that's cursed. And that leads to hell on the lake of fire. And we need to get off that broad way by placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior from sin. And walking walking on the narrow way. The thing about the narrow way is it's lonelier. There are fewer people on the narrow way. Most people are on the broad way doing whatever they want to. Most people, if you go to uh, most of the schools, most people are on the broad way. They're lost. Few people are on the narrow way. All right? But the narrow way is worth it because it leads to God. And it leads to God's heaven, where the broad way leads to hell. Everlasting punishment. So, um, may God bless you, and uh, I miss you. And, like I said, the homework is the first seven chapters of Psalms. Now, I didn't bring my guitar, so I won't sing and dance for you this time. And uh, we'll, we're still trying to figure it out you know as as things progress and change and this is the first video so it's a little awkward maybe the next one will be better uh, maybe not you know you know me so we'll see um, but before we dismiss I'd like to pray for us again dear Lord I pray for each one of these children and for everyone who whoever watches this and I pray, Lord, that you would help me and that you would help us to follow you on the narrow way. And that we will follow you not just so we can get your blessings, but so that we can get closer to you. That we can get to know you better and that we can help other people to get to know you better. Thank you, Lord, that you are in control. Thank you, Lord, that you give us your peace. I pray that you will protect us from all evil and that you'll help us to love you and others every day. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you.